you are not supposed to attach people's problems to their sins. All your sin was punished in one man called Christ Jesus. And you speak and you stand with the word of God that says that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So no matter what I'm going through, I am an overcomer. Victory is guaranteed. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this program. Ben Fetcher is my name and I'm blessed and I am reigning in Christ through one, Jesus Christ. And the name of the show is Beholding Christ and this is Wema TV. And I am so, uh, I am so happy this day that the Lord has again enabled us to have a conversation with you though you are on the other side and I'm on this side of the screen and I rejoice because the Spirit of God is speaking to you, speaking to me, speaking to us by His Word because He has chosen His Word and He is faithful to fulfill His Word. He gives birth to us by His Word. We are born of the Word. We are shaped by the Word. We are renewed by the Word. We are cultured by the Word. And the word is what God follows after his word to fulfill. So God does not follow after our stories. He does not follow after our tears. He does not follow after our thoughts to fulfill them. He follows after his word. So if we have to have tears, let those tears be defined by the word. If we have to pray, let those prayers be defined by the word. If we have to, uh, to think, let our thinking be shaped by the word. So that when everything about us is by the word, then we'll have, we'll have a, a, a victory guaranteed life. Why? Because God is following after his word to perform it. And this is a wonderful moment. We are here to behold his word, to learn his word, to hear his word, to understand his word, and to know how to walk by the word. So I welcome you to our show today. I'm so excited. I am blessed of Christ. In our last episode, we started a series or a conversation on how to have strength over adversities. And I invite you again so that we can take it up from where we left last time as we see how to respond to adversities. And maybe to take you a little back, what we said last time was that no one is no one is exempted when it comes to tribulation. And remember, our our verse is John chapter 16, verse 33. And John 16, verse, 3, verse 33, uh, again we can take it up, John 16, verse 33. We can read it again, yes, using the New King James Version, John chapter 16, verse 33. That is our key verse for this, uh, for this episode, for this uh, series on strength over adversities. So, this is Jesus speaking, so in my Bible, it is written in red. And verse 33 of John chapter 16 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. And we established that peace is in Christ. So those who have Christ in them, they have peace. Those, those, who, have, those who are in Christ, they have peace. So something that God and Christ has guaranteed you is peace. And we say this peace is the peace that cannot be described, the peace that cannot be explained by human hand, by human words. So it is the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. So that is not something we are praying for. That is something we live in. In Christ is peace and we are in Christ. So we are in the place of peace. So we are not praying for it. It is inside Christ. Praise God. And it is a guarantee. Then he said that uh, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. So after he says that in him there is peace, then he said something that is very important. This is what we are dealing with in, uh, in our series. That in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Something I love about God, something I love about our Father is that he will never allow the enemy to take the day. You never allow the enemy to carry the final story. That is why whenever the place, uh, whenever we get to a place of, uh, of maybe tribulation, maybe a place of sickness, 
that will never be the end of the story. So even right now as I speak to you, whatever you are going through, be it a sickness, be it some challenges in your finances, be it some challenges because of the hard economy that you are having at, uh, uh, right now in the, in the nation or wherever you are, whatever you could be experiencing, I have some good news for you. That God will never allow your hard times and tough times experiences to carry the day, to be the end of the story. So this thing that you're experiencing right now, it's not the end of the story because after the tribulation, there is a but. Oh, hallelujah. After Jesus says that in this world you'll have tribulation, he went ahead and said, but be of good cheer. Wow. And that is the good news that if in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the tribulation, there is a room to have good cheer. Why? And he said, the reason is because I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. So in this world, because you're in the world, you'll have what? Tribulation. But Jesus said, you can be of good cheer. Why? Because he has overcome what? This world. Praise be to God. So we can rejoice because of Christ. And we said, uh, he didn't say you may have, he said you will have. So it is inevitable. Then we say it, there are ways not to respond to tribulation. There are ways not to respond to uh, adversities. When adversity, when tribulation comes, there are ways not to respond to it. Number one, you should never think that it is strange. It is abnormal. So going through tough times, going through stuff is not abnormal. It's because you're in this world and you are... Uh, you have a body. We read a verse in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, where he says that uh, though we have the treasure in other vessels. We have a heavenly treasure in us, though we are other vessels. And because we have this other vessel, we are hard pressed on every side. So that is inevitable. So it is not abnormal. That is what we said. Then we also said that do not think that if you you are from a good background, if you have a lot of money, if you have a good job, or you are, in a, you are living in a good city, a good country, that you, you are immune to tribulations. No, 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 no. No one is immune. No one is immune to tribulation. Everyone will go through trouble at a point. But the thing is this, you may experience different situations because of your different levels of life. But it is inevitable. No one is immune to tribulation. So do not think that... You know, when you have that thought that I should not go through trouble, when it comes, you'll be shocked. And some of us, some of, some people may be shocked and die. So don't think that you are immune. Then the third one, which I said I will emphasize today, is on do not think that trouble comes to you because you have sinned. And this is very terrible. I've seen so many people leave church because of this. I've seen so many people give up on things about Christianity because religion has lied to them that the reason things are not working for you is because you don't wake up at 12 a.m. to command your morning. You don't wake up at 3 a.m. P, uh, 3 a.m. to command your morning. You don't pray. You don't give your tithe. That is why things are not okay. But I am telling you, your situation is in no way attached to your sins. Because God punished sin once and for all. Where? All sin, all your sin was punished in one man called Christ Jesus. And God is a just God. God is not evil. If God punishes the same sin twice, then he is not a just God. And he cannot be called God. He cannot punish the same sin twice. If the sin was punished on Christ, whatever you are going through is not a punishment for your sins. Hallelujah. I think I should say that again. You know, because many people, when they go through stuff, when they go through some pains, when they go through some sicknesses, when they go through issues in life, the first thing that comes into their mind is to try to think, what did I do to deserve this? No, you did, not, you did nothing to deserve this. Because God does not allow you to get what you deserve. If God allows us to get what we deserve, no one can stand. If God was to deal with us according to our level of sins, my God, none of us can stand. So it is not about what... You did to deserve your problems. 
you are you go through tribulations because of two things I mentioned in the in our last episode. Number one, because you are in this world. Number two, because you have this body. That is why we go through tribulations, not because you have sinned. So when trouble comes, that is a wrong way to respond to trouble. That because I have seen, uh, because I have seen what is going on in my life, I must counter check what have I done. Others have been taught. To go back to their backgrounds. What, did, what, 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 what was your grandfather doing? Was he a good man? What was happening in the, in, in the, in the past with the great-grandfather, great-grandmother? Whatever was happening, now you are told. Because your grandfather was a witch, that is why things are not working out for you. And as long as you believe in that, that is how it will be. But God wants you to know this, that whatever you go through, any pain, any situation, any kind of trouble that you go through, never attach it to your past mistakes. Because that is what many people do. They think, uh, my business is failing. I, and I know there is a teaching that goes on around. And I believe maybe you've encountered or you have heard that teaching. That says, if you don't pay your tithe, God will come for it. And people believe, because I failed to pay my tithe, that is why my children got sick. And I used the same same amount that I could have used to pay uh, that I could have used to pay my tithe. I used the same same amount to. Okay. I used the same same amount of money to do what to go uh, to pay for the for the hospital bills. Why? Because I didn't I didn't pay my tithe. That is why sickness is happening. So most people are are are, are in that kind of a bondage. They think like because. I have not done enough because I've not paid tithe fully because I've not prayed enough because I've done this and this because I have sinned that is why my things are not working but I want you to understand that it is not because of what you've done that things are not working it is because you are in this world something to do with your sin it is good to understand in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 maybe I can read that verse 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Again, I'll read from the New King James Version, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What does that mean? This means that everything to do with your sin was taken by Christ. Hallelujah. So never attach your sins to your tribulation. I know there are consequences of the things that we do. There are consequences of sins. There are things that, that are a result of what you did or the mistakes you did. But never think that it is God punishing you. Never think that it is God punishing you. God is not punishing you for your sins. And I can say this from the rooftop. Everything about your sin was dealt with one by one, completely through Jesus Christ. And that is why he cried with the Lord voice. It is finished. Because he finished the issue of sin. Once and for all. The Bible says that. The, the Old Testament priests. They used to offer sacrifices for sins. Every now and then. Because the business of sin never came to an end. But when this one man Jesus Christ offered a sacrifice. He offered one sacrifice for eternity so the issue about your sin has been dealt with completely so stop attaching what you are going through to the sins or the mistakes that you have done praise be to god because jesus did not say if you sin there will be trials or there will be tribulations he didn't say if you sin he said in this world hallelujah so it is not attached to your sins so trials and tribulations happen to both sinners and the saints the difference is in how each of them responds to these trials. So do not start to condemn yourself because this is how people get into the place of condemnation. They start condemning themselves because uh, they have failed, they are going through tribulation and they have realized maybe it's a mistake they did, it's a sin that God is punishing. So they start condemning themselves. But God says that he is not condemning you. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And sometimes even your heart condemns you. But let me read you a verse in the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 19. Because sometimes our hearts condemns us. 
and you feel like I don't deserve anything from God. I have sinned. That is why things are not working for me. So my heart starts to condemn me. But First John chapter three verse nineteen says, I read with the uh, again from the New King James Version. I read from verse eighteen. First John chapter three from verse eighteen it says, "My little children, let us not love, the, love let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and truth." Verse nineteen says, "And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our, heart, our hearts before Him." Verse twenty: For if our hearts condemns us, there comes a time when your heart condemns you, and you feel like you dis, you don't deserve anything good from God. That is the place where your heart condemns you. But this is what He says: God is greater than our heart, and knows all things. God knows that he has justified you. God knows that he is not condemning you. So stop condemning yourself. Praise be to God. Stop attaching your mistakes, uh, your, your, your tribulation to your mistakes. Because if God will mark iniquity, who can stand? No one can stand. But the Lord is loving, he is kind, he is merciful and gracious and he does not treat us as our sins deserve. But according to what Christ deserves. Did you get that? I say God does not treat us as our sins deserve. Because if he treats us as our sins deserve, leave alone that business, leave alone that your, that family, that, that thing that you're going through. None of us could start because if he treats us as our sins deserves, no one could start. But God does not treat you as your sin deserves. He treats you as Christ deserves. Because he sees you in Christ. Whatever Christ deserves, that is what you deserve. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, yes, I can hear that is a, a breath of fresh air because some of us have been robbed by religion and we feel like, you know, re the work of religion is to make you feel like you're never good enough. But on the cross, there was a divine exchange. That is what we, we read in 2 Corinthians 5.21. He became sin that you might be made God's own righteousness. Praise be to God. So when a man lives under that uh, under that mentality, when that is, if that is how you respond to situations, that because I have seen, then I'm, that then God is punishing me using this uh, tribulation. You'll always, uh, be, uh, you'll always have no confidence to relate with God because that will make you feel like you are not worthy. So you'll not have any confidence to relate with God. You not have any confidence to ask for anything from God because you feel like you have failed God. My friend, you have not failed God. You cannot fail God because he sees you as he sees Christ. Because when you think that you have failed God, you will not have a good relationship with him. You will not enjoy his fellowship. But you must understand that you are the righteousness of God. So don't, uh, uh, don't think that you go through suffering because of what you have done. And now this will also help you to in your relationship with others because there are people who they, their work is to uh, is to accuse other people for example a friend comes to you maybe it's your brother your sister or maybe a friend just a friend comes to you and tells you what they are going through and you start asking them that uh, have you been praying enough have you been paying your tithe what is the name of your grandfather what is the name of your grandmother then you tell them this is the reason why things are not working for you so you are such a person, you're not different from the devil who is a, the accuser of brethren. You're not different from him. You are not supposed to attach people's problems to their sins because you cannot deal with their sins. You're not the one who died for their sins. Christ died for their sins. So God, uh, their sins was punished on Christ. So stop imposing that whatever they are going through is a result of their sins. So when we understand this, we'll also know how to deal with other people and we we'll stop condemning them and telling them that they are going through whatever they are going through because of their sins. The other point, number four, is that we should never think that tribulation come to destroy us. The moment tribulation or trial or a circumstance or a big situation or a mountain stands before you and you have the mentality that it is supposed to destroy you, you are finished. That is why you must have this mentality that no circumstance comes to my life to destroy me. Because when you have that mindset, when you have that mentality, that whatever comes to you comes to destroy you, you'll be destroyed even before that thing leaves you. And you know 
There is power in the mind. Whatever you, you think in your mind, the Bible says in Proverbs 23 verse 7, that as a man thinketh, so is he. So when you go through a tribulation, when you go through an adversity, when a, a situation, a hard situation comes in your life and you think like, I'm finished. Because that is what is in your mind, you are finished. We have seen and we have had testimonies. I don't know whether I should call them testimonies. You have heard stories from doctors, how someone was diagnosed of a certain disease. And before they were told about that disease, they were healthy. They were eating well. They were going on well. They were, re they were recovering very well. But the moment the doctor told them, we have diagnosed, we have seen like you have some you have cancer in your body, but you are still checking. The moment you mention cancer, that patient starts seeing himself or herself uh, as dead. And he starts saying like, I start thinking of how he's going to sell his properties. He's going to sell everything he owns. He's going to give up everything so that he can be treated. So the moment that mindset comes to you and you think like this is the end of yourself, it will be the end of yourself. But God is teaching you this thing that when trouble comes, don't ever think that it has come to destroy you. Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. So the best way to respond to trouble is not by thinking that it has come to destroy you. Because we have heard people say, when they were given a certain, before they were given a certain message, or before a certain trouble came their way, they were doing well. But the moment that trouble came, especially that sickness, the moment that they were diagnosed of that disease, then they said, I am finished. My friend, Jesus did not say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. So that you'll never say, I am finished. He finished all that so that you'll forever rejoice and cheer up because he has overcome the world. Praise be to God. So do not think that it has come to destroy you. Because when you think it has come to destroy you, you'll say words like, I am finished. This is the, the end of my life. This is the end of my story. But we say it. Tribulation will never be allowed by God to be the end of your story. So you must align your mind not to think like trouble comes to finish me. It does not come to finish you. Rather, you, you should stand up. You should take position and declare God's word to yourself. Uh, and one, one thing that you can declare to yourself is like, maybe I can, I can go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. 1 John 5, verse 4. It's about overcoming. He says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. So you must have this mindset. You must stand on the word of God. Whatever comes your way, don't allow it to swindle your mind or to, uh, to, to change your mind and start seeing yourself as, as a person who is finished or you are cooked or nothing is going to work for you again. No, 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 no. You must allow your mindset to be established in the word. And you speak and you stand with the word of God that says that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So no matter what I'm going through, I am an overcomer. Victory is guaranteed. I am more than a conqueror. Why? Because you are born of God. That is uh, one way not to respond. Don't think that trouble comes to destroy you. The other thing is that when trouble comes, when bad situations, when things happen in your life, many people end up blaming God and saying, God, you have allowed this to happen. And people get bitter with God. I've seen people get bitter with God because maybe someone they loved passed on or someone got sick and people are angry with God because of tribulation, because of trouble. For example, maybe it's in your business, your, pre your business premises got burnt up and there was fire and everything was destroyed. And you start saying like, God, why did you allow this? Or you start blaming God that he is the cause of your trouble. But that is a wrong way to respond to trouble. Do not blame God for your trouble. Jesus did not say, in the world, I will give you tribulations. No, he didn't say that. He said, in the world, you'll have tribulation. He didn't say, I will give you tribulation. So, he's not the one who is giving you tribulation. He does not give you tribulation. He is not the cause. He is the solution. Never see God as the cause of your tribulation. Hallelujah. Never see God as the cause of your trouble. See him as the solution for your trouble. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because 
God cannot be tempted with evil and he does not tempt anyone. The devil is the tempter. He is the one who causes trouble. Praise be to God. So never think that God is the source of your trouble. As long as you see God as the source of your trouble, you are cooked. Because you have nowhere to run to. You cannot run to the devil to rescue from God. He will not he does not have the ability to rescue from God. So every and, and remember, we've said here again and again in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to, uh, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. So when Jesus landed, when Jesus came on this world, he brought a distinction between the, the killer, the, uh, the, the one who steals, who is the thief, and the one who gives life. And he says, it is the thief who steals, kills, and destroys. And it is Jesus that gives life. So anything that happens in your life and you see that bad thing as, and you see God as the source of that bad thing, you are saying that he's the, the thief who is stealing your health. You're saying he's the thief who is killing your health. You say that he's the thief who is killing your business. And he said clearly that I am, my work is to give life. The, the day you see God as the source of your trouble, that is the end of you, my friend. Why? Because... You know, you'll be not, be, you'll not be having anywhere to run to. And the Bible says that the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous run and they are saved. So if God is, if you think God is your trouble, where will you run to? How will you escape from the trouble giver who is God? Because the devil will not rescue you. So think about that. So he is not the source of your trouble. He is a life giver. He is life and he wants you to enjoy life in abundance. And I know there is this statement that we usually say every now and then, that God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And let that remain, even when you're going through trouble. God remains to be a good God. When you know who is the, the source of your trouble, you'll stand in your position and face him, because you've been given power and authority. Hallelujah. So, don't be carried away because the Bible calls it trials of faith. God gave you your faith in Christ. He already knows your faith is genuine. Because he's the author and the finisher of faith. So the faith that may be tried is the faith of Christ. And that faith is the one that the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. That this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Which faith? Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. That it is no longer I that live it. But it is Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live, to, that the life that I live today. I live by the faith of of the son of God. So it is not your faith that is being put into trial. So because it is, if it is your faith, it will fail. It is his faith because you have received the faith of Christ. Because he's the author and the finisher of faith. So is the uh, the one testing and trying your faith is not God, it's the devil. And he is testing, you know, the devil comes to put the word that is in you to test. And like we see in the in the in the book of Genesis the devil comes and tells the, uh, Eve, did God really say? So he is questioning the word of God. But you should never blame God. Because he is not a bad God. He is a good God. Praise be to God. He is not, he is not the cause of your pain. He is the deliverer from your pain. He is not the killer. He is the healer. Hallelujah. That is how not to respond to tribulations. In our next episode, we will see how... We should respond to tribulations because uh, there is a way to respond to tribulations, especially for us who are in Christ Jesus. I know you are blessed. And whatever you may be going through, I, 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 I tell you this for sure, that victory is guaranteed. Jesus did not say you'll have tribulations and ended it there. He continued because you'll never allow tribulation to be the end of the story. He says, but be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. So whatever is happening in your life, you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Because greater is he that is inside you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my viewers today. Whatever they are going through, they are victorious. And victory is guaranteed because they are in Christ. If there be anyone that is sick, 
By the word of God, I speak healing over their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever they may be going through, I declare victory. The victory of Christ in their finances, in everything they are doing, in their businesses. Whatever is happening in their lives, I declare the blessing and the victory of Christ. Because he has overcome, he has given us his victory. And therefore, we are more than conquerors. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. That was the show, Beholding Christ. My name is Ben Fetcher, and I am blessed to be with you. And don't miss our next episode of Strength Over Adversities. And I call you blessed because indeed you are blessed. Amen and amen. <music>